Welcome back into the GSMC Sports Podcast as we're now going to be diving into the other Monday night football game that we got last night. That was a little bit of a slugfest, a lot of ugly football in this one as the Tennessee Titans were able to pull off a win against the Dolphins 31-12. to Now, like I mentioned, it was a bad, couple bad offenses facing off against one another. Titans ended up putting up 31 points, but it doesn't really feel like he was all that great. He was just 9 of 17, only 85 yards passing. In this game, the Titans were able to just sort of benefit from the fact that the Dolphins couldn't put together any sort of sustainable drives. Now, they did see, you know, well, for starters here, like I mentioned, Mason Rudolph, don't want to blow over the fact that he did end up taking over for Will Levis after the second drive, where Levis, it was another pretty ugly start for him. First drive of the game, he ends up throwing an interception, his ninth turnover of the season, just blatantly did not see the defender in Emmanuel Ogba sort of sitting on that route. He was staring down DeAndre Hopkins. Ogba was just able to sort of read him down the entire way and... Ended up picking him off there. And then second drive, it was a three and out for Tennessee, but Will Levis ended up diving face first um, for a first down on the sideline. And when he came down, he seemed to sprain something in his shoulder, it sounded like. Now, this sort of move to Mason Rudolph, and he ended up, again, not doing all that much, but was able to at least not hurt the Titans team as a whole with the turnovers, which of course, like I mentioned, nine already in this NFL season for Will Levis that significantly leads the NFL up to this point. And ultimately, You know, I think it is worth a conversation as to whether or not Mason Rudolph puts the Titans in a better position to succeed. That being said, Brian Callahan was very adamant that Will Will Levis is the starter moving forward as long as he is healthy. So, you know, maybe a little bit of a decision to come in the long term, but ultimately sounds like they're still going to lean with Levis, which I can't say I totally disagree with, considering the fact that the Titans are not a team that's expecting to be in playoff contention this season anyways. So ultimately, you know, you might as well give it more of a shot with Will Levis because it's not like it's been all terrible with him. The turnovers have been horrendous, of course, but ultimately speaking, they have done you know, they've had moments at least of Levis being able to drive down the field. It's just trying to eliminate those turnover plays that have been so costly for the Titans up to this point in the season. So again, they, they end up putting up 31 points, the Titans do, but it was more so about you get five field goals from Nick Folk, who has been automatic as of late as well. Get some explosive plays from the running game and Tony Pollard and Tajay Spears. That that part is definitely a positive. Still no Calvin Ridley really to be seen whatsoever for this Tennessee offense, which is a bit concerning to me considering how much money they spent on him. But they also, obviously, their biggest concern right now is trying to evaluate that quarterback position. So even if it was an overpay for Calvin Ridley, that at least, you know, they have another weapon for him on the perimeter, but hasn't been put to use, at least as of yet. On the other side of this game, though, and I think more importantly, is the Miami Dolphins, who have been in an absolute free fall since week two. And specifically, you can point to the the moment in the third quarter where Tua Tagovailoa went down with a concussion. Now, Obviously, that game wasn't great anyways, but that moment the two went down really changed the entire prospects of their season because up to this point, I mean, they it's very clear they didn't have a legitimate backup plan at quarterback, which feels like a mistake in its own right. Now, Mike McDaniel seemed to think that Skylar Thompson was a reliable option for them. It hasn't really appeared that way as of yet, but 
I mean, as of yet, it's been one game that he ended up getting knocked out of and very late in the Dolphins, in the game against the Bills as well in week two. So, you know, he's down with an injury. They're starting Tyler Huntley at this point, who is very clearly limited from, in you know, a passing standpoint. He's a fine runner. He was able to sort of operate a... Baltimore Ravens offense where him and Lamar have more similar skill sets relative to Huntley and Tua compared against one another. Now, you know, if there's any sort of area of improvement, it's the fact that, you know, Tyreek Hill was sort of discussing with Tyler Huntley a little bit animated at times, but the idea of just throwing it up and ahead of him a little bit more as opposed and just having those deep shots be at least a threat on the table and Huntley did end up overthrowing Tyreek on one of those plays but honestly I think that that is kind of something they at least need to take shots on because they're not getting any sort of you know methodical drives realistically speaking especially relative to the offense that they're currently running with a Tyler Huntley at quarterback or I think with a Skylar Thompson which does also sort of have a ripple effect of NFL fans should probably be a little bit more appreciative of what Tua is as a quarterback. We're seeing how the Dolphins are operating in his absence, and it has been a nightmare. Now, that doesn't mean that if you have reservations about Tua, the quarterback, that you are wrong in this situation, because myself, I do still feel like Tua is limited, but that being said, some of the skills in terms of the timing, the decisiveness, having at least a good enough arm talent are things that the Dolphins are very clearly missing at this current moment without him. And that being said, the Dolphins, I mean, they seem to think that Tua is going to make a return this season kind of feels like the way that things are going up to this point at the current moment that the Dolphins might not even make it later in the year to a point where the Dolphins are even going to be in contention for a playoff spot with three straight losses. There was a graphic that they flashed at one point at the beginning of the third quarter ESPN did, and it was nine points in the last nine quarters stretched back to the Buffalo game. Now, ultimately, they end up you know, scoring 12 in this game, so they got a little bit more going for themselves, but it's still a mess there in Miami right now. And obviously, for a team that is coached by Mike McDaniel, who is, and I still think is, but you know, his identity is being an offensive mastermind, and right now it is a disaster class for that Miami offense at this current moment that sort of leads you to the point where what what are you necessarily good at at this current moment? Now, they have playmakers on the defensive side of the ball. Jalen Phillips did go down with an injury in the game and ended up having to leave. Hopefully it's not too serious there because Phillips does have some injury history and baggage there at the same time. But I think that ultimately speaking here for the Dolphins, this is a situation where they seem to think that Tua will be back and they can just sort of ride things out here. I would be pressing the panic button a little bit more in terms of you got to go out and get somebody because at this point, I just don't know what's even the point of playing the rest of this year if you're just going to be banking on Tua and you're going to be throwing him back into the fire where he has this concussion history already and you're just going to throw him into it for the sake of what? Competing to win six, seven games? And, you know, everything could change once Tua steps on the field. But I'm just saying that is an extreme risk that you are running in that situation if by the time he comes back, the Dolphins are so deeply buried into this hole that they're in right now where they're one and three. They are, you know, getting ultimately, I mean, kind of smoked by the Titans. The Titans completely dominated that game. It's just that Titans also just aren't that good. So they weren't fully able to make them pay. But still, you know, a 31 to 12 loss is still pretty su substantial. And I don't even think the Titans played all that well. I just think it was that they were better than the Dolphins in this particular moment. So for Miami at this point, they are next week on the road against the Patriots, which is a game that Patriots, not, not all that difficult of an opponent themselves. 
That being said, the Patriots are also looking at this game, myself as a Patriots fan, saying this is, you know, probably one of the few games in the upcoming stretch where the Patriots can actually win, considering the fact that their offense prob- looks even worse than the Patriots' offense, which is very hard to do at this current moment given what's going on in New England. But that being said, you know, Maybe, maybe a big spot for the Dolphins to at least pull out a win here and then go into the bye week in week six and be able to sort of settle down and find some sort of an identity. I just don't know if they have the answer at quarterback currently in that locker room between Tyler Huntley and Skylar Thompson or Tim Boyle as well is in the mix there. So I think that, you know, there are probably upgrades out there. It's probably going to be one of your cheaper cheaper options at that. You know, maybe a Jimmy Garoppolo. Maybe you get a Russell Wilson, which is a situation that has some developments as of this afternoon that we're about to dive into. I'm not saying that there are elite options out there. I mean, maybe if you want to go and spend a little bit more, you go for Jameis Winston or Bryce Young, but I don't really see those types of deals panning out for the Dolphins at this point. So they're just kind of stuck middling right now. And again, maybe Tua is just going to be able to sort of resurrect this team and have it be able to come back together. But at this point, I mean, I think what I was at least initially hearing when it first occurred, the injury, that it was going to be a minimum of eight weeks. That would take them through week 10. At that point, the way that they're playing right now, I don't have very much confidence whatsoever that they will be even in the mix for the playoffs that I think it might be worth going out and spending a little bit to go at least get a temporary solution. And then if you have some setbacks with Tua, at least you have an option for the remainder of the season. But either way, things are looking very grim in Miami right now. And this is coming off of a year where they spent big on Tua, spent big on Mike McDaniel in the offseason. And to see it play out like this has been very disappointing. But let me know what your thoughts are in the comments section. I did just mention the idea of the Dolphins potentially being able to make a trade for somebody like a Russell Wilson. And that sort of goes hand in hand with the fact that we got some news as of this afternoon that Russell Wilson is trending towards returning from that calf injury that he's been dealing with. But it appears that Justin Fields will remain the starter and we are going to dive into a little bit of their game this past weekend against the Indianapolis Colts in which they suffered their first loss and talk about what that quarterback situation currently looks like there in Pittsburgh. But before we do so, we are going to take a quick break. Do not go anywhere. We will be right back. <laughs> 